In this video, I will show some strategies for checking information in an online article for credibility. Misinformation grows when a source of information, say a research study, is presented in the media in incomplete form or with a misplaced focus. This is especially true when the information touches a controversial subject or the publisher uses hyperbolization, since readers tend to interpret the publication using their emotional response and forget to check the story for credibility. Sharing an emotional interpretation of the story on social media perpetuates misinformation. Let's look at an example. Recently, a friend of mine posted a frustrated post on social media, saying that joggers are contaminating the community by splashing coronavirus around with their shoes. My friend was very upset about this. The post referred to an article from iflscience.com titled, SARS-CoV-2 can be transmitted via shoes and spread up to 30 feet in the air. I decided to investigate this article to find whether my friend is correct about the shoes of joggers. The first sign that raised my suspicion is the title. Even though this headline does not sound sensational and is simply a statement of fact, there is too little information in the title about how this fact was confirmed. Usually, media at least will add a figure of authority in the title to demonstrate credibility. Another useful observation is the use of a stock image. If you look at the caption, you can see attribution to Shutterstock. This image fits the general topic of the article, but the blurred out photo of a crowded hospital in times of pandemic seems like it is used not for providing information, but rather as an appeal to readers' anxiety. To check this information for credibility, first, first I want to find some basic information on the publisher, iflscience.com. Is this a credible source? Who are the people behind this website? I Google the name of the website and Wikipedia, and it leads me to this person, Elise Andrew. Wikipedia says that she's a blogger, a founder of the Facebook group that popularizes bizarre scientific facts. Later, she became one of the founders of the iflscience.com. I note that this person has received several awards and was a public speaker in relation to science communication, so they might be an authority. Further, in the section Plagiarism and Other Criticism, I noticed that the iflscience.com has been criticized in the past for misattribution of content and publishing misleading facts. While I will not make this information the only reason to not trust the article about shoes, it definitely makes me much more suspicious. Next, I decide to investigate the details of the story and attempt to find the original source of the information on shoes. Was my friend right about contamination of joggers' shoes? The first paragraph reads, new evidence suggests that the novel coronavirus can be distributed up to four meters in the air from infected individuals and be transported by way of shoes, prompting healthcare experts to release new recommendations. So here, no information about who these healthcare experts are or what they recommend specifically so far. Here I find a reference to a report with a link to a credible source about COVID-19, Center for Disease Control and Prevention. I will check it out, but first I need to make sure I understand what this article claims exactly. Here we can see that the study was conducted in an intensive care unit at a specific hospital in Wuhan. Therefore, the study is not about shoes worn outside on the street by regular people, as someone might interpret the headline. The contamination was found specifically on shoes of medical staff in the ICU units treating severe cases of COVID-19. If I click on the provided reference, I can examine the report further. First, let's notice that this is not the final report, but an early release article, so it is a preliminary report. To make this faster, I will read the abstract and notice that it does not say anything about shoes. Then I search for the word shoes and find that it was mentioned only twice. This short passage shows that shoes of medical staff working in the ICU unit treating severe cases of the disease might be contaminated. And the recommendation is to disinfect shoe soles before walking out of wards containing COVID-19 patients. Taking in consideration this quick research, we can conclude 
that the article by ifl-science.com used hyperbolization, which resulted in misleading information. Joggers' shoes are not spreading the virus. That is unless they are jogging right out of the ICU unit. Remember, hyperbolization does not mean that the article is false. It just means that some aspect of the story is magnified to affect your reaction to the story. So, to check credibility of the website, identify signs that raise your suspicion, such as a strange headline or images. Find more information about the publisher using search engines and Wikipedia. Read the text closely to investigate the details of the story and click through links to find the original source of information and make your own interpretation of facts.